The crime, the biggest crime in our world today is the way we treat forgotten children. In the parts of the world that are poor, they're very expendable. In Cambodia today, there are 1,600,000 children under 17 who are considered to be vulnerable. This is not an easy country to make things happen sometimes. The vision of the Sharing Foundation, I think, is extremely unique. There is no template. We're always inventing. Every day of the week, we are looking for an answer to a problem that we haven't dealt with before. When we become satisfied, we stop growing and we stop improving. And I think that has not happened with the Sharing Foundation. Now, the Sharing Foundation, by mission, is a project for the improvement of medical, educational, and social welfare of children. So we started the orphanage in the year 2000. It opened December 14, 2000, in order to take care of children who were, in fact, not even uh, admitted to other orphanages because they had handicaps such as HIV or cerebral palsy or their parents were in prison. They were not children for adoption, but rather children who were just kind of discards from other parts of life. When they first come to the orphanage, they almost die. They look pale, skinny, but when they've been there like up to three or four or five months, then they look perfect. Can you pick out among these playing children, the children who have HIV? No, because if they're well fed, they're taken care of uh, well, and they are on antiretrovirals, and we also follow them very carefully medically, and that's our aim. Grow these kids up just like the ones who don't have HIV, to educate them and to have them become successful adults. Government orphanages, when you're 18, you're out the door, whether you have a skill or not. We consider that we are their family. Children at six or seven in this culture have jobs. They're taking care of a younger sibling. They're working in the field picking vegetables to earn 30 or 40 cents a day for their family. But they're considered small adults and they work. Whereas these kids have a pretty carefree life. We now have 22 children in first or second grade in a building on our orphanage grounds and they are learning at a great clip, one nanny is assigned basically as a mother, and the children bond very heavily to the to nanny. So nutrition is emphasized, and just loving the kids. They almost compete with each other, like suburban mothers, in pride of their kids. There's such a community here. I mean, they have each other, they love each other. I just hope that all of the orphans in the world would find someone who would treat them with the dignity and the love and the sense that they are valued that the Sharing Foundation does. I think that they are very lucky because that even though they do not have parents, but they will have a good future. They are giving an example that you don't live your life in your own little compound, but that you live your life in the village. The farm project was started when we went to the village chief and asked him what was the biggest need in the village of Rotiang. He said the biggest need was to do something about the poorest people of the village. So we scouted around and were able to rent some fields and then basically told the families that they could enlist in the Sharing Foundation farm project with one requirement, and that is that their children go to school. I told them, now you cannot read, you cannot write. So you do not let your children like you. You have to send your children to the, to the school. Now we have um, over 100 children a day going to school in this thatch school. And when they go home and show their parents their little workbooks or their little notebooks, and the parents are very proud of their children. You see what needs to be done, you work it out with the community leaders, and you go ahead and do them. We also sponsor a range of education programs for village students, including 450 kids who come to after-school English classes in Rotiang Village, and 50 high school students who have private classes in Khmer at the regional high school. I am number three in my class. The students here are more interested in learning than students in the cities. Because they know that the pot of gold, shall we say, at the end of the rainbow is pass that national exam and the Sharing Foundation will sponsor you to go to university. 
for the previous time, there are very few students pass the national exam from high school. But now, the Sharing Foundation sponsored them, and more and more students pass the national examinations. When we bring home half that group every other weekend, when they get off the van, people literally come up and bow down to them as if they were Olympic gold medal winners. There has never been in this village a university graduate or even a university student. We realize not all children are academic, so we needed to have some programs that basically were for the less academic youngsters, and that led us to starting a sewing school for young women so that they would have a marketable skill. We've sponsored a number of boys to Die Deck Moped Repair School. We've sent a number of young men to IT training. We are teaching from the beginning responsibility, kindness to your fellow human being. They grow up to see that you can have a very happy life without corruption and cheating and abusing your fellow neighbor. If the people have a high education, uh, they can develop their country to get better and better than before. I want to be a doctor because that I would like to help all of the people in the world. If you don't educate people, if you don't give them a vision when they're young, they're not going to be part of the solving of the problem, they're going to become part of the problem. It's absolutely predictable. DSF is also really interested in trying to prevent the transmission of HIV from infected mothers to their infants at the time of birth. Owens House was established to take care of infected moms so they could get nevirapine in labor and their babies soon after. The result has been to cut the HIV infection rate in their infants to 2 to 5 percent from the usual 25 percent. So if someone who heard about this program, then they can join. Then we never turn them away. Another problem in this country is the massive discrimination against children with handicaps or defects and there are no laws that protect them, and they are definitely looked at as very second-class citizens. So we started a program of at-home handicapped kids to get those kids in school, and often, because they come from incredibly poor families, subsistence groceries. Even though it's a small amount of the people, but we do not want to quit them and abandon them again, you know? If they come our program, we would like to have them to succeed it for their life. Simple provision of groceries has given that family hope. The Shearing Foundation has an overhead of like 9%, always less than 10%, because we don't pay any Americans. It's amazing. <laughs> a moderate amount of work and a moderate amount of money really absolutely positively changes their lives. One person cannot respond to 1,600,000, but you can respond to one person. So yes, our 73 children at this orphanage are a drop in the bucket, but for them, it's life-changing. DSF have give me hope, love that I never had before. People have to be aware. They don't have to make a monumental difference, but they can make a difference, and then do it. <laughs>